Hi, Mikai, and welcome to Expanded Paths, Violence and Fences 2.2. There is a lot to cover now, so let's just hop right into the features. Now I will do a quick visual recap of all of this at the end, but let's first go through all of these objects one by one and show you how they look and what they do. And following the name, first up, paths. These are pretty much the same as in the last version, so you have your standard existing paths, and then the new paths, which are... First of all, log line paths. So we've got log line trails of different thicknesses, like so. And that's sort of what they look like. Then you have your light line paths, which are very similar, but instead of logs, they have light around them. And these are best seen at night time, so let's just switch to that. And there you go. Same as that, but this time it's lights. Then we have the dirt paths, which are pretty similar, in that they don't have a texture, but they do leave dirt on the ground. Again, different thicknesses, and it's the same as that, but without any sort of lights or logs, it's just dirt. Next we have invisible paths, very similar, except these don't spawn dirt, and they don't remove grass. So as you can see, they are completely invisible. After that, we have the viewing path, so that uses a luxury path uh, texture, and what it does is if you connect it to a entry point somewhere, it will spawn viewing points all around it. You go into visibility, there you go. You can see that it has viewing spots around the path. And then finally, we have the pass-through varieties of the above paths. So that's just paths that don't remove grass, as you can see here. And they can also go into water without removing it. Not that one, <laughs> but these. And you'll see there's no dirt or invisible equivalents because they're basically already covered. Dirt paths remove water, whereas invisible paths do not. Keeping up with this theme, we also have tracks. So if we go into a driver station or any other uh, tour building, you'll have your standard path, or your standard track rather, which just is a track with lights on it. But now, Actually, let's switch into nighttime. It'll be easier to see. Now we have a unlit variety. And also pass through varieties of both. So pass through lit up variety and they pass through unlit variety. Again, pass through tracks are like pass through paths. They can go through grass without destroying it. They can go through forests without destroying them. And they can even go through water without destroying it and we can reach it, which is quite far. I didn't plan this very well. <laughs> there you go. And of course you have a unlit variety as well. Which is basically completely invisible. Now these new varieties of tracks are available at all stations. So that's in gyro stations, in Jurassic Tours, in guided tours and in the multi track tour. But also there's a special variety in Jurassic Park Tours. As you can see, there's a few more here. And that's because Jurassic Park Tours also have a concrete variety of track. And they also come unlit. So now you have lit varieties. We've got lit regular tracks and lit concrete tracks, as well as pass through regular tracks, pass through lit tracks, pass through concrete tracks, and pass through lit concrete tracks. So again, these can be put into water without removing it, which looks quite cool if I can reach water. There we go. And same with these original tracks. Or rather, these original pass-through tracks. And yes, you saw the title change correctly. This time, the mod also comes with new pylons. So these here are the vanilla pylons. Now on top of those, I've added back in the original Jurassic World Evolution Jurassic Park pylons. So that's kind of what they look like. 
and that little bit on top is a light. So if we go to nighttime, you see it glows red, just like it did in Jurassic World 1. Or rather, Jurassic World Evolution 1. And then we have two wireless pylons. So first of all, we have these test the pylons. They sort of spark and spread power that way. And go buzz buzz. And then, finally, we have insulated Tesla pylons. So again, wireless, they can be connected up, but they don't spark. And just to show that they work, let's connect up the Jurassic Park pylons over here-ish. There we go, see that power's on. And likewise, let's connect up the Tesla pylons over here. Just sparking away and sending power. Alright, and with all that covered we can finally get to the fences, of which there are quite a few now. But a lot of them are just different varieties of the same stuff. So for example, this is what the vanilla Jurassic Park era fence looks like. You know it, you probably vaguely enjoy it. Well, if we go just past invisible fences here, we get to different varieties of that. So first up, you have this little fence here. See, it's one directional. It's not sort of double-sided like that one. Now, the reason why you start with the middle part instead of the sort of proper big pylon like you do here is because the end pieces need to be double-sided. And that is because of a weird quirk of the game. So the first pylon you place faces, I think, this way, whereas the end pylon faces that way. And then when you extend it, you add another one facing this way again. So if you were to build using these pylons as your start and end points, you'd sort of get this effect, but a bit more broken as you can see, they're sort of they're slightly displaced, they're not quite at the same angle. So this is the best workaround I could find for that. But there are a couple of other differences. If we go down into first person mode, you'll see that the wires or the cables on this cable fence are a lot thicker than on this one. And that's because this fence is a proper cable fence. I made it a bit thinner so it looks more like the movies. And again, to sort of mimic the movies, they go next to this pylon and not through it like they do here. There's a little wire sticking out holding it up. But if you really want to start off with the big pylons and not the middle pylons, this fence kind of does that. So it has the double-sided pylon as the start and end point, and then in between, you alternate between the middle pylons and the uh, sort of one-sided pylons. So you got this, this, and then it connects into the vanilla pylon. And this removes the need for an extra little divisor here. See this fence here only has the big chunks for the uh, main pylons, but this one I had to add small little chunks here. However, this fence doesn't need to have those. Oh, and I guess one more thing I forgot to mention is that they're also a bit thinner. You can see these are quite a bit thicker than the one-sided pylons. I call them pylons, they're not pylons, what are they? I guess posts. Next up, we have a tilted variety. See, it's tilted. It's similar to this one here, but all the fence posts are slightly tilted to the side. And again, the Connective pylons, the ones at the start and end of each section, need to be double-sided. And in first person, they look a bit like this. Or in fact, they look exactly like this. And of course, because it's double-sided, you can build it the other way, and it will connect just fine. Now I actually quite liked how this fence looked, and I wanted a non-electric variety, so that's what this is. I should change the icon though. <laughs> It's similar, but without the electric pylons. See, it's just the sort of middle pylons. And, as you can see on the map, it's non-electric. It's also leaning, but it's just a regular fence. And then the next one is just a double-sided version of that, so it's leaning in both directions. It's quite a bit thicker, and I think it looks quite nice as a sauropod fence. And because I quite like that, I made shorter varieties as well. So first of all, we have the first fence again. So again, leaning with electricity, but it is a lot shorter. 
in first person, it's about yay high. And likewise, we have the non-electric variety and the double-sided non-electric variety. And you'll also notice that these here lean a little bit more than these tall fences. That's because it looks a bit less weird. You can make them lean further while still making it look quite nice. And I think that looks quite nice as a barrier enclosure, sort of like this. So see, it's leading quite far, and it's sort of leading over a big hole. And if you've played the last version of this mod, you'll know that any sort of sided fence like these, you build them left to right, and they'll face away from you. So building left to right, this is the guest side, and this is the dinosaur side. So like so, or if we build this fence here, like so. And as mentioned before, you can connect them the other way as well, and they should connect up just fine. And this goes for all of them. If I can find which that one was, there we go. And then finally rounding off the Jurassic Park themed fences, we have this classic medium JPEG fence. That's not what it's called, but that's what it is. And it looks sort of like this, or again, exactly like this. And as the name implies, it's inspired by the JPEG medium fence. So moving on from that, we have two chain link fences. We have a short chain link fence and a medium chain link fence. Of course, they all come with their own sort of connectors. There's a short one, there's a tall one. That's sort of how they join up. And of course, they are designed for first person mode. Next up, we have the handrail fence, and again, you build left to right, and then this is the guest side, this is the dinosaur side. So, you build it like so, and there's a handrail on your side. Looks sort of like this. And again, the end pieces have to be double-sided. Next, we have two low fences. We have the very low fence, and then a slightly taller fence, but still a low fence. And again, designed for first person mode. They go just below your field of view, so you can sort of look over them quite comfortably. And with this one, you can look through the bars quite comfortably. And again, of course, they all come with connectors so they can line up quite nicely. And finally, in this set of fences, we have the vertical bar fence. So this was designed as a sort of park fence, if you're familiar with those, which I'm sure you are. <laughs> there we go, that's sort of what they look like. It's like a standard fence you'd see at a park. And then we have a few varieties of some wire and cable fences, starting off with wire fences. First of all, there's a steel wire fence, and then a log wire fence. Very similar. One is made of sort of steel posts, the other one has log posts. Again, designed for first person mode. But then we get back into some new fences again, and these are some new cable fences. So we have a steel cable fence, a log cable fence, and a low log cable fence. As you can see, you can't build an entire section of these, you can only build them one at a time. That's because the cables can only connect from start to finish. So having sort of in-between posts wouldn't really work here. And as you can also see, they are influenced by physics. 
So if I were to start attaching a fence to it, that would reset it, and you can see it fall again. And because you have to build them one sort of segment at a time, I made them a little bit shorter. So whereas normal fences go sort of this far, these cable fences only go this far for the regular ones. And then a little bit less for the shorter variety because otherwise they'd clip to the ground. And also the shorter variety fence has a lower minimum distance. So you can see these go a little bit further than this one does. And as you can imagine, the short fences were made specifically for these sort of large paths to separate them out. But I'm sure you can find other uses of them as well. And this is what they look like in first person mode. Next up, we have a fence that we had in the original mod, this being a low wall fence. Or I guess just a low wall, it's not really a fence is it? Looks sort of like this, again it's designed primarily to be put around large holes in the ground. Sort of like this. And again, designed for first person mode. So you can sort of look down and see what's below it. Next we have a few invisible fences that existed in the original mod. So first of all, the invisible barrier wall. That's sort of what that looks like, it's using these electric pylons to generate a wall. That's sort of what the connector looks like, and again, you can walk through it, but dinosaurs cannot. And then in a similar vein, we have a invisible wall, which is completely invisible, it leaves no marking on the ground. And then we have a mark invisible wall, which is invisible, but it does leave a mark on the ground. So you can at least see where you built it. And of course the marked invisible fence stops foliage from spawning on it, whereas the fully invisible fence does not. And now we have a whole row of, again, some new fences. First of all, we have a few hedges. So let's check those out. Let me just build some paths to put them into perspective a little bit better. There we go, that'll do. Now all of these, all the way up to this one here, are procedural fences. So that is a fence that when you place it down, it has a blueprint, and that's what the blueprint looks like, but that's not what the fence will look like. So if I place it down, it fills in like so. And if we go into first person mode, it looks like this. It's a very low hedge, it's made of plants that were shrunk down a little bit, and it does react to physics. And of course it does block the player from walking through, but it has basically no defense against dinosaurs. Next we have a medium hedge, so very similar, try not to, actually let's do it here, there we go. That's what the medium hedge looks like, and I'm struggling to fit it next to the path, so let's just do this. See, it's a little bit taller than that hedge. It's a hedge that is sort of mostly at your eye level, a little bit below, so you can still see over it, but just barely. Finally, we have a tall hedge. So that's a hedge that completely blocks your view. If I could just... Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Good enough. And as you can see, that's a very tall hedge. And like with all the other hedges, you can sort of see the bottom of the hedge as well, as you could in real life. So I think it looks quite nice. Then we have an even taller hedge, called a bushy hedge. Now it's not strictly speaking taller, again you'll see that it sort of defaults to the blueprint style, but as soon as you remove that, it does procedurally generate what it's meant to look like. And the bushy hedge, again it's best compared to the tall hedge I think. It's a little bit bigger, and it's a lot thicker. Just build it off here as well to give you a comparison. It's a lot bigger than those hedges. And this is sort of what they compare like in first person mode. Again, really very tall. You can still sort of see under it, just about, 
But the hedge itself is massive and very thick. Next we have two different pine hedges, which are very similar, just have slightly different trees. This is the first pine hedge, and this is the second pine hedge. It's a hedgerow made of pine trees, basically. From two slightly different biomes. Then we get to my favourite new addition, the log wall. And it looks kind of like this. As you start placing it down, you'll see it's got these logs again, that's the blueprint. But once you place it down, see auto generate its height, procedurally generates itself, and it looks like this. Again, designed for first person mode. And of course it has connectors, so you can sort of connect up to different fences at improper angles, like so. And that's sort of what it ends up looking like, which I think is quite nice. And then finally, we have the barricade, which again, procedurally generated, but it's a, well, it's a barricade. <laughs> There's not too much to say about it. It looks like a military barricade of some kind, or maybe not even military, but just... Yeah, it's a barricade. And as you can see here, this does have some defensible value, so we can use this to house dinosaurs, as well as this log wall, but that only has one defense value. And one more thing to note, whereas the log wall does remove grass around it, the barricade and the hedges do not. So if you build a hedge here, you'll see it keeps the grass as it was. And with that, we reach the final addition of the mod, which are the guest gates. So you have the classic guest gate, a Jurassic Park guest gate, and a Jurassic World guest gate. And if you attach paths to them, and then attach them up to an entrance, and somewhere for guests to go, guests should be able to use them. Now there are a couple of things to note about these. First of all, you cannot open them without a path attachment to a entrance. And that's because of how this game works. That's just kind of how it is. So once you attach it, you should be able to open it. And the second thing is, I had to make the hitbox quite tight for most large dinosaurs to not be able to come out. Uh, some still can, but most shouldn't be able to. And so, in order for guests to be able to pass through, you have to sort of build a straight path, straight in and out. If it curves, if it like curves a little bit like this, guests can struggle to get past that hitbox. So make it a little bit straight. Sort of like it did here. And then thanks to this, guests can go in and out. Now one last thing to add is that while these normal fences all have working broken models and damaged models, that is, you can't break or damage the fence and it will show, these procedural fences and cable fences, which are also procedural, do not have broken models because they're procedural. You can sort of make a functioning broken model for them. And with that, I believe that's about it. So that's all of these fences, all of these paths, these here pylons, these gates, and all of these tracks. That is the mod. Hope you enjoyed the showcase. Hope you enjoyed the mod when it's out. I'll see you around. And now for the short recap.